Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are changed from the inside out. Beyond the storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups today, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Burke Brown. Come in with our word for today for our spiritual exercise, our spiritual fitness, our spiritual nourishment of the word. It is the milk. It is the meat. It is the bread of life, the living water. Every day, Monday through Friday, we're on here with the word. Every uh, Monday through Friday in the mornings, we have morning prayer. If you've not yet joined us, check out the information underneath so you can join us at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time live for prayer every day Monday through Friday listen if you this is your first time joining us welcome get your pen paper highlighter and your Bible so you're prepared to take notes so you can go back and study on your own if you're already a part of the uh, sit-ups welcome back we are going into the word we're already in John chapter 9 we've already done up to uh, verse 25 through verse 25. So today we're starting in verse 26. We've already done the first eight chapters and, and most of the ninth chapter, but I'm going to see if we can wrap up this chapter today. So get ready, uh, get spiritually ready, get your materials together, get your Bible out, turn to John chapter nine. Don't forget if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, if the word subscribe, I believe is read underneath, you've not subscribed, click it and subscribe to the channel. And if you hit the bell afterwards, you will be notified when I upload videos. So hit like. Don't forget to like it if you do. And hit subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to be notified. But open up your Bibles to chapter 9 of the Gospel of John. We have been talking about the man that was born blind and Jesus healed him. And the religious leaders want to know who did this, who did it on the Sabbath, who did it. Uh, the man was like uh, the verse, the last verse we read in verse 25. He basically said, listen, because they told him this man is a sinner and the blind man, the man that had been blind, but now he could see. He said, whether he's a sinner or no, I don't know. But one thing I know, I was blind, but now I can see. So we're in verse 26. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name and honor you. We thank you for your word, for your truth. We thank you for spiritual food and nourishment, spiritual fruit for guiding, leading, and directing us, giving us a measure of faith. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is our teacher. We pray today that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us individually and collectively, that we would grow thereby, that we would no longer be spiritual babies and infants, but that we are growing and maturing, that we are um, changing, that we are being impacted by your word, God, that we can be used as vessels and instruments to impact and influence those around us. So help us to be a light, to be a vessel, to be an instrument, to be an ambassador of Christ. And we give you all praise and glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. John chapter 9, we're beginning in verse 26. After this man who can now see tells the religious leaders, I don't know if he's a sinner or not, but this I do know. I was blind, now I can see. Verse 26, then they said to him again, what did he to you? How open are your eyes? They're saying, what did he do to you? How did he make you see? How did he change you? How did he change you from being born blind, blind your whole life, and make you see? And verse 27, this man said to them, I've already told you, and you did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? He said, I already told you what happened. I told you, you know, what he did. You want to keep hearing it over and over? You weren't listening before? What, why do you want to hear it again? You want to be one of his disciples? He's basically mocking them. Like, you know, you know, you know. And this is one thing that we need to understand, even in our lifestyle evangelism as we go. You may be in your workplace with your family, telling them different things that God has done and who he is and what Jesus has done and how your life has been changed. And oftentimes it seems that people are mocking. They're making fun of, well, what about this and what about that? And a lot of times... Christians, believers, will get upset because they feel like, you know, this is a debate. And they begin to go into a debate with somebody about it. Don't do that, right? Just keep talking about his goodness because this is the thing is that oftentimes people seem to be mocking and they're asking ridiculous questions or having you repeat things or, well, where is that? But really deep down inside, right? They're trying to see, is this real? Is this true? Because they really want to know. They really want this to be real. They really want hope. They really want to be changed. They really do. But because they don't understand it, 
It seems as though they're mocking, making fun. And sometimes they come off that way, right? But it's really challenging the believer to stand on the word and just to continue to speak the truth and stand on their testimony because that is the greatest way to evangelize is showing it through our lifestyle, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we act, the way we respond, and always staying in the truth. So then after that, in verse 28, then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we're Moses' disciple. We know that God spoke unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. They said, we don't know where this guy came from, but we know God spoke to Moses. But they weren't even there. You know, they weren't even, in, you know, back when Moses was physically alive. But they know what the law says. They know what the word says, right? But they're like, we don't even know where this man came from. But in verse 30, the man answers them and says, why hearing is a marvelous thing? That you know not from whence he is, and yet he's opened my eyes. This is like, he's saying, this is like, this is crazy. Like, this is so weird. This is strange. He healed my eyes, but yet you say you don't know where he came from. It's almost like he's like, okay, it was, it was, it was something to marvel about that he even healed my eyes. Like that was amazing. Like that was a supernatural miracle. Like I was born blind. He healed me. Like that is over the top miracle, blessing, breakthrough, astonishing, amazing. But what seems to be even more like of a strange, miraculous thing is that he healed my eyes and you still claim you don't know where he came from. You know, if we really begin to tell people what God has done for us, that in and of itself will open them up to just want to keep hearing, just want to keep, you know, well, what do you mean? Well, how did that happen? And it makes them more and more curious because they don't understand. And so this is what he's telling them. Like this, the more craziest thing, the weirdest thing, the strangest thing, the biggest miracle of all is that you see what he did, but you still act like you don't know where he came from. And so um, in verse 31, now we know that God hears not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and does his will, him he hears. Since the world began, was it not heard? that any man opened the eyes of one that was blind. If this man were not of God, he couldn't do nothing. So this man is telling them, like, you basically, uh, you might be a religious leader. You might be, you know, um, in a position with a title and all of this stuff. But this is, like, basic. Like, in the beginning, like, you haven't heard of anybody, right, being able to open the eyes of the blind. You know God doesn't hear the sinners that, you know, but if somebody is a worshiper of God, if somebody is doing God's will, if they're in right standing with God, he hears them. And so if this man, he says, wasn't of God, he would not have been able to do this. This is the work of God. Verse 34, they answered and said unto him, thou was altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. So this is where we were talking about those that were talking about Christ as the Messiah or believing in him or honoring him. That they were already told that it was already something they had decided that they were going to cast him out of the synagogue. They were going to kick them out. So this man has been, you know, let go. Like get out. Like you can't be a part of us. You can't worship with us. You can't be connected to us. So like get out. So now this is. Often what happens when somebody is truly standing for God and his word and the truth is that when you really do, even some of the people <laughs> that are claiming to know God will separate themselves from you because some things are just too deep. They don't want to go that deep. They don't want to acknowledge, you know, certain things, certain truths. And so now this man has said, listen, this is of God. So they tell him, you were born in sin, you won't teach us. And this is this is the pride and the haughtiness of many that claim to have a relationship with the Lord is that they can't open up their understanding to the spiritual because they think they know everything. 
and they're telling this man, you were born in sin, as though they weren't. The Bible tells us we all sin and come short of the glory of God. We have to remember that God can teach us through anybody, through any circumstance. We have to be open to see the miracles, see the signs, see the wonders, see his work, see the spiritual. That is the importance of having a spiritual mind. The Bible tells us to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In fact, um, write down the scripture, amen, that is in um, Romans chapter 8, I just want to, 5 and 6, Romans 8 verses 5 and 6. And it, it tells us those that who are living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. We have to continue to exercise godliness and stay in God's word and his presence in prayer and in praise and in the word. So that we are spiritually minded. So that things that he's revealing to us, speaking to us showing us we can recognize these are religious leaders that don't recognize the messiah right before them even after the miraculous works they don't acknowledge him and so they put the man out and in verse 35 jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him he said unto him dost thou believe on the son of god and he answered and said who is he lord that I might believe on him. He wants to believe. He's like, show me, tell me. And this is the hunger of those that have experienced the power of God. And this is the danger of us as believers not going out and sharing the light and laying hands on the sick and casting out demons in Jesus' name and speaking the truth and giving our testimony so that other believers can see, so that people that don't know are able to accept Christ. They are able to see his work in action, see the word in action, see faith in action, see love in action, see the love of God for them. It makes them hunger and thirst and desire him. So this man didn't just say, no, I don't know him, but he's saying, who is he? So I, I want to believe that, that I might believe on him. Who is? Tell me. People begin to hunger and thirst. And so this is how we are the salt of the earth. We should be making people thirsty for the living water through our walk, through our actions, our testimony, through our action of faith, through us walking the word out regardless of what others think and what they say. We ought to be willing to be persecuted, to be mocked, to be talked about. So somebody might believe. You know, Paul says, I've become all things to all people that some might be saved, right? And so then the Bible tells us, after this man says, who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Jesus said to him in verse 37, thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with you. He's saying, it's me. Like you've seen me, I'm talking to you. It's me. I'm the son of God. I'm the Lord, right? I am. And so in verse 38, he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. See, this is the importance of us connecting with people. You know, this is the man that was born blind. He was a beggar. And oftentimes we see people all along the street, right? In different places. They're begging. They're in bad situations. They seem hopeless and helpless. And many believers bypass them, look over them, you know, go over on the other side, like the priest and the Levite that overlooked uh, the, the, um, man that had been robbed and beaten, you know, in the gospels. And they, they went by on the other side. They looked down on them and they passed over and they didn't help them. They were on their way to the synagogue, on their way to the temple. And oftentimes we're on our way to the church. We're on our way, you know, to say that we are going to praise God. We're going to worship. But the, but the, the opportunity to truly worship him and do the work of the ministry, we bypassed and overlooked it. And this man was a beggar, you know, after he was able to see, they like, is this the man that was the beggar? Is this the man? You know, is this him? It looked like him. We don't know, right? But this man experienced the, uh, the, the power of God in his life. And surely now he's believing. But when we bypass people, whether it's on the job, on the street, people that seem hopeless, helpless, that are in a bad way, that are, you know, Oftentimes believers are just like, oh, you know, look at them. They look at where they're at. Look what they're doing. Look how they're living. They want to be like that. You're missing opportunities for people to become a believer. 
You know, this is just, if he's a beggar, he's just like the people we bypass. When you see somebody with a sign, when you see some, yeah, some people are out there because of things that they've done. But you don't know why people are out there and you don't know if they want to change. Many people out there want to get free and they don't know how. They want to be loosed and they don't know the way out. And many didn't put themselves in that situation. Some did, some didn't. Some love it, some don't. Some hate it, some want to be delivered. But they don't know how. And we have the answer, but we bypass and overlook many times as believers, as a whole, as a church, as the body of Christ. And so this man has experienced the Lord, saw him, talked to him. You know, Jesus is receiving him where the synagogue has put him out. Outcast. Remember in John chapter 4, Jesus was talking to the woman at the well. She was an outcast. She was a sinner. He was talking to her, not the people in the city. He didn't go into Samaria. He didn't go in looking for the prominent people, the, the people with titles and positions and all that. He went to the one that was by herself, an outcast. This man was by himself. He was a beggar. This man was by himself. We miss out on opportunities because we're looking for the crowd. We're looking for the grand. We're looking for the big. Every individual matters to God. And so he talks to this one man who has just been, you know, put out from the, from the, from God's people. And he tells him who he is. And the man says, I believe, and not only did he say I believe, but he worshiped him. It's like the man, you know, with the 10 men with leprosy that cried out to Jesus, right? In the book of Luke, and, and, and they went and he told them, you know, go show yourself to the priest. And as they were going, they were being healed, but one came back and worshiped. One came back and acknowledged that his healing was, was there and that he worshiped. And Jesus said, where are the nine? Most of the church are the nine. Because the one that came back and worshiped, he was made whole. It was life changing. The Bible is specific in saying he was made whole. That means the other ones weren't made whole. They were healed of the disease, but they weren't made whole. Relationship makes us whole. We can receive a healing. We can receive. And that's the importance of making disciples. Jesus didn't just heal the man. And then the man was just out there. And then he got put out of synagogue. Now he's out here like, now what? I can't go to the synagogue. They put me out. I can see, but I'm not connected to anybody. No, Jesus came back relationship. Do you know the son of God? This is where we make disciples and stop just going out here, just saying random stuff and listening to false prophets and leaving people out here to try to figure it out. We're called to teach the nations to make disciples. And so he worshiped him in verse 39. And Jesus said, for judgment, I'm coming to the world that they which see not might see and they and that they which see might be made blind. Let me read that again because I kind of messed it up. Jesus said, for judgment, I am coming to the world that they which see not might see and that they which see might be made blind. What in the world? What what does that mean? He's talking about spiritual blindness now. He's saying I entered into this world to render judgment, to give sight to the blind and show those who think they see that they're blind. This is spiritual. The religious leaders were spiritually blind. They couldn't recognize the spiritual. They couldn't uh, recognize what was really of God, even though they were leaders, even though, you know, they thought they knew the law. They know, you know, the rules. They know different things, but they don't have a relationship. So they are spiritually blind. This man, this is a illustration in the natural of what's going on in the spiritual. He was blind. Jesus made him see. Those that are spiritually blind, he brings sight to them, right? But those that think they can see, he shows them, you, <laughs> you can't see. You think you see, but you blind. And so that's why when we look in um, Luke chapter four, just write down Luke chapter four, verse, I want to say it's 18. Let me make sure. Verse 18, right. Um, well, 17 and 18. Luke 4, 17 and 18. And it says, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. This is Jesus now, Jesus. Um, and he's saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty 
them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, actually through verse 19. And so this is why he came. But he's revealing that those that, that can't see, he can give them sight. But those that think they, they see, he's showing them you're blind. You, you don't even know what you're looking at in the spiritual. And so this is important for us as believers. Are we seeing the truth? Are we caught up in the outside and man's tradition? And we talked about, you know, uh, man's doctrines and teachings and, you know, false teachers. We have to be able to have a spiritual mind, spiritual eyesight, so we can see what is truth and what is not. Spiritual discernment. And then in verse 40, it says, And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. In other words, <laughs> if you acknowledge, if, if you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty, right? If you couldn't see, you know, you didn't understand. But you remain guilty because you claim you see. You, you pretend like you know. You say, well, we know and we're Moses' disciples and we, you know, and now you're guilty. Right? Because you say you see. And so now you are guilty. But if you're just blind, Jesus is able to make us see. He's able to reveal to us. We press into him. This man gained relationship with him. He, he you know, he off, you know, all through this chapter, we see the process of it, right? He acknowledged in John chapter, uh, chapter nine, just all in chapter nine, in verse 11, when he says, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes said, and told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received my sight. So first he acknowledged him as man right there, that he was, a, you know, he was man at, at that particular time. He was walking in the flesh. But in verse 19, you know, when they said to him, do you, you know, do you say, um, what do you say about him? You know, because he opened your eyes, and, you know, and he said he's a prophet. So now he acknowledges as a man and a prophet. But then in verse 27, um, when he says, well, I already told you that you weren't listening. You know, why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples also? So now he's his disciple. Then in verse 33, he acknowledges that he's from God. And then in verse 35 through 38, he acknowledges that he's the son of God. And then... In verse 38, he acknowledges that he believes. And then in verse 38, he worships him. Relationship. And so let's look at this. Go back and meditate on this whole chapter. Go back uh, to the couple of verses that we referenced um, outside of here. And study this and meditate on it. Get the principles out of it. Make sure we're walking in faith. Make sure that we have spiritual eyesight. Make sure that we're growing spiritual. Make sure that we have relationship. Make sure we're not ashamed of the gospel. Make sure that we're not worried if people are going to separate from us or put us out of the clique or the group because we're going to stand for righteousness. We're going to represent Christ. We're going to speak the truth and we're going to tell people our testimony. We're going to close out in prayer, meditate on this, share this if this is going to be helpful to somebody else don't forget to hit like and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to join us for morning prayer if you're able if you're available and you feel led to do so father in the name of jesus we bless your name and honor you we praise you we love you we thank you that you are the great i am we thank you for giving us what we stand in need of we thank you lord god father for ordering our steps help us to feast off of this spiritual word and to be nourished to be fit to be bold to be zealous and to be profitable and fruitful for the kingdom of god we love you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you on our next sit -up. It's time for sit-ups. All sit-ups. Spiritual impact training using prayers and scriptures.